In this lesson, we're going to hit the slopes. Wait, did you think we were going skiing? <laughs> well, close. We're actually going to talk about the slope of a line. By the end of this lesson, you'll find yourself gliding through any ACT question related to slopes. First, let's start with some basics. The slope of a line is a number that measures a line's steepness and indicates what direction it goes in. We can visualize this using a coordinate plane like this one. Moving from left to right, if a line goes up the coordinate plane, then the slope is positive. What does a negative slope look like? Well, if you're moving down as you move from left to right, then the slope is negative. If you're given a graph of a line, the easiest way to find the slope is to create a right triangle. Here, we can use the slope and both axes to create our triangle. Now, we can apply the formula for slope. Slope equals rise over run. The rise is how far a line goes up or down on the y-axis. In this case, the rise is negative 2, and the run is how far the line moves along the x-axis. So, we have negative 2 over 4, which we can simplify to negative 1 half. Now that you know the basics, let's apply them. Here's an example of an ACT slope question. What is the slope of the line in the following figure? Start by circling the keywords slope and line. Our answer choices are A, negative 3, B, negative 2, C, negative 1 half, D, 1 half, and E, 2. We can see that the slope is negative because, going from left to right, it slopes down. Right away, we can eliminate any answer choice that isn't negative. Let's cross off D and E. Now, let's make a right triangle using the axes. We're ready to use our formula, slope equals rise over run. It's helpful to write it out. We already know that the slope is negative, so we can add that. The rise, which is the vertical line in our triangle, is 2, so plug that into the formula. The run, or the horizontal line in our triangle, is 1, so go ahead and plug that in. The answer is negative 2 over 1, which simplifies to negative 2. This is choice B. Nice! This method works great when you get a graph. However, sometimes you'll be asked to find the slope, but you won't be given a graph. In these cases, we can use the point-slope formula. The point-slope formula is slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's bring up an example ACT problem and solve it using the point-slope formula. What is the slope of a line that passes through the points negative one-half two and negative one-quarter one-quarter in the x-y coordinate plane? The answer choices are A, negative 28, B, negative 10, C, negative 7, D, negative five-halves, and E, negative seven-fourths. The first thing we'll do is label the two sets of coordinates as point one and point two. This will help us keep track of each x and y coordinate when we plug them into the equation. Now, let's write the point-slope formula we'll use to solve the problem. Let's go ahead and put those values into the equation. y2 is 2 and y1 is 1 fourth. x2 is negative 1 half and x1 is negative 1 fourth. A quick check on our calculator and we get 1.75 over negative 0.25 which the calculator tells us is negative 7. Boom! Choice C is our answer. Okay, we've covered basic slopes and the point-slope formula, but there are a few more things you need to know. Parallel lines, or two lines that will never meet, have the same slope. On a coordinate plane, we have a line we'll call L, and it has a slope of 2. All lines parallel to it will also have a slope of 2. Next, if two lines meet at a 90-degree angle, they are perpendicular. The slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals of each other. You probably know that the reciprocal of a fraction is a fraction turned upside down. For example, the reciprocal of 3 over 4 is 4 over 3. To get the opposite reciprocal, you just have to add one more step and change the sign of the reciprocal from positive to negative or vice versa. In this example, the opposite reciprocal of 3 over 4 is negative 4 over 3. 
Let's look at another example to see how this works. We'll start with line L, which has a slope of 2. If we're looking for the slope of a line that's perpendicular to line L, it will be negative 1 half. The slope will be the same for every line that is perpendicular to line L. Understanding how to apply the opposite reciprocal will come in handy as we tackle this next example of an ACT problem. However, I'm going to make this a pause and solve problem, so you can work it out on your own before we go through it together. Grab some paper and a pencil, and when I say pause, you'll pause the video and solve the problem. Come back when you're done. Here's the question. As shown in the following figure, the angle between lines M and L is 90 degrees. What must the product of their slopes equal? Okay, ready, set, pause. Welcome back. Let's go through a breakdown of how to solve this problem. The answer choices are A, negative 2, B, negative 1, C, 0, D, 1, and E cannot be determined. We'll underline the facts. Angle between lines M and L is 90 degrees. Next, circle the keywords, product and slopes. Finally, label the answer choices product of slopes. Perpendicular lines form a 90-degree angle with each other, so we know these lines are perpendicular. We can use the picking number strategy to solve this problem since anytime we're looking for the product, ratio, sum, or difference of two unknown numbers, we can usually pick numbers. Since we know that the slopes of perpendicular lines are the opposite reciprocals of each other, let's pick a number for the slope of line L. Let's say the slope of line L is 3. The opposite reciprocal of that is negative 1 third. That's the slope of line M. Now, all you have to do is multiply 3 times negative 1 third. You end up with negative 1, which is choice B. All right, treat yourself for that one. In this lesson, we took on all kinds of slope problems, and we used our tried and true picking numbers strategy. I think you should be ready to take on those black diamond slope questions like a pro. But as always, make sure you practice a few of the hundreds of problems available throughout this course.